from Burnt River Ranch. Thank you for tuning in to another video. Today I wanted to do a detailed review on the milking machine that we've been using. We have built one ourselves and we are using what's called a surge belly milker, but the vacuum pump portion of it we actually created ourselves. So I'm going to give you guys a detailed video on just exactly how we built that and why and just how to hook it up to the cow and all that. I've been milking our cow, our Jersey cow, Penelope, by hand for a little over a year now. And I have been developing some symptoms of carpal tunnel. And so I thought that getting a milking machine would give my wrists a little bit of a break and give them some time for the nerves to heal. And also thought it might be easier if we do ever get a farm sitter out to come and milk our cow maybe it will be easier for them to milk by machine rather than by hand. Let's get into what we all have going on. So this is what is called a surge belly milker or a surge bucket milker. And this is what we use on our cow. So the reason we decided to go with this style of milker is because it's very easy to clean, especially if you're only milking one cow. Um, cleaning a claw style milk machine can be very time consuming. It usually takes longer to actually clean the machine than it does to milk by hand. So a lot of people that have just one cow will milk by hand and sometimes we do still do that. I would say probably about 50 to 60 percent of the time we are still milking by hand just because sometimes it's quicker especially if my husband and I are both doing it together. But like I was saying sometimes I do have symptoms of carpal tunnel and my husband's not always home. So if I'm able to, then I do use the machine on Penelope. So basically, the whole idea of the Surge bucket milker is it has this handle portion and there's a bar and a strap that goes over the back of the cow. And the milker actually sits on this bar underneath the cow's belly. That's why it's called a belly milker. And that way, if she does move around, the, the bucket always stays with her. It doesn't um, get pushed off. It's always staying with her. These inflations and the hoses are never getting stretched to the point where they fall off the teats. So that's nice. Um, so these parts here are the inflations inside here. These cups are where the inflations sit inside. This is the vacuum line and this is the milk line. And the lid sits on here. There's a little rubber gasket inside. This is the pulsator part. So this is the part that um, when you're suctioning onto the cow, you don't want just constant pressure. You want to pulsate as if you were hand milking or to simulate how a calf would nurse. To have constant pressure on a cow's teats can be damaging towards them. So you definitely want to have a pulsator. But this is a C-style pulsator. The Surge company had another one called an S-style pulsator, and I believe that's an older version. And this is the original pulsator that has been uh, refurbished. You can get refurbished kits if you can find a pulsator. You can buy a kit to fix them up if you're willing to put in the time and effort to do that. Um, when we bought our milk machine, this whole unit was already set up, already refurbished by someone locally. So it was basically already ready for us. And you can get different sizes of inflations as well. These are wide bore inflations. Our cow has really wide teats. They're nice long teats for hand milking, but they are really wide. So she needs wide bore. If you have a different cow, you might need a different size of inflation. So keep that in mind. This portion here is where you attach your vacuum hose line to, and the other end of the hose will go to either your vacuum pump or your balance tank whatever you have it set up as. That's kind of the gist of it. I'm going to show you now what we have set up for our vacuum pump system. So this is kind of what we have set up for our vacuum pump system. We put it all in a nice convenient portable cart so that we can haul it around to different parts of the farm and put it away in the shed when we're not using it so that it's never sitting out in the elements. Um, I will say I have not used this setup yet in the winter time. Uh, where we live in Canada, it gets quite cold here, uh, minus 40, minus 50 sometimes in the winter time, so I do not have experience with how it would work in that cold of temperatures yet. 
I would imagine if we were going to use it in that colder temperatures that we would keep it stored in a building and probably have um, heat to it, either in the form of like a heat lamp or something like that, just to keep it warm before we start it, or we might just bring the whole vacuum unit inside. So this is what we have going on. Um, we opted for a homemade system because it was going to be far cheaper than purchasing a actual milking vacuum pump. Um, the cheapest one we could find that would properly operate the type of milking bucket that we have was going to cost us about $1,500 US and that doesn't include shipping or any customs charges for bringing it over the border into Canada. So that's why we opted to go with this type of system. So we ended up buying a 12 CFM Vevor vacuum pump from, I think we got it off Amazon, but you can buy it directly from the company as well. And we just went with the biggest one that they had because we weren't sure if it was going to be large enough to operate our milking machine. But now that we've been using it, it is plenty big enough and I'm sure it could run three two to three cows easily so definitely don't need to go this big but you do want to research with what type of milk bucket you have to make sure that you get a pump that's big enough to do that um, I don't remember exactly what the surge bucket milker requires in terms of CFM I know 12 CFM is on the way high side for what it requires but I want to say around 5 to 6 CFM sounds right in my mind for what you would need. We plug it in, it has a cord. We just plug it in either to an outlet or to an extension cord. Um, this is a hose that comes into a filter. This is just another type of moisture trap. Uh, when you're going with a do-it-yourself type of system, especially with these cheaper pumps, um, I've heard that they kind of crap out after a year or two and I think from what I've read, the biggest reason why they do that is because they either run out of oil. You have to make sure that they are filled up with oil here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little level there. And another big, big reason why they do not last is because they get moisture inside them. And you cannot get moisture inside of these pumps. They're not designed for that. So we made sure that when we were designing this that we did not get any moisture inside the pump. There is the odd time, it's not supposed to happen, but there is the odd time where you will suck milk into the pulsator and it'll come into your vacuum line. And so you don't want that going into your pump, obviously. Okay, so then this part here, this long tube here, um, I think it's called the ABS pipe. I might be wrong. Yeah, ABS pipe, that's right. Okay, so this ant Ask, or this um, acts like your balance tank. So what that does is it allows the vacuum pump to build up pressure inside of this tank before going to your cow. So as you're putting inflations on and taking inflations off and as the cow's getting milk sucked out of her and you're fooling around with the vacuum going up and down, basically this just keeps it at a constant level. So this is important for that reason, also important for making sure that no moisture will go into the pump. So we put a gauge on there so that you can always tell what um, your vacuum pressure is at. So we like to run ours at about the negative 10, somewhere in between the negative 10 and negative 15. And this right here is kind of how I adjust my vacuum pressure once I have the machine on. This is a filter and also helps with moisture. If I haven't uh, reiterated it enough times, not getting moisture into the pump is important. So that is why we have that on there. So that's how that works. And then this, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. This is the surcingle strap that attaches to the cow's belly. Okay, so this here is your vacuum hose that you're gonna hook to your milk bucket. And we made ours kind of ridiculously long because we weren't really sure how our cow was going to react to having the milk machine on. She's um, a seven-year-old jersey and she's never been machine milked before so we were a little bit concerned that she's going to freak out but she's actually been really good about it and really tolerant but 
you know, having a longer hose is probably better than having two shorter ones. So that's why we did that. You don't have to have that long, obviously. Okay, I'm going to go get our cow now and get her tied up and ready to milk. And I'll show you guys putting the machine on. Okay, once you have your milk bucket on your cow like so, you're going to turn your pump on. I have this dust cap, there's a dust cap that sits on here. Make sure you take that up off or else it's going to blow off into oblivion. So you turn it on. And then I just leave it for like a couple seconds here. It doesn't take very long and then I'm going to adjust this. kind of like just over the tennis so when it starts kind of staying where I want it to okay so I've already stripped out so you're going to want to strip out the first few bits of milk here and I always put a kick bar on just because it's a good safety protocol You have to wiggle it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, some things I couldn't really say when I was doing that. This bucket here needs to be really level, as level as you can get it with the ground, or else it does not hold vacuum properly. And you have about a three second window with this pump where you can get the inflation on after you've brought it up. So when it's sitting down like this, it will hold inflation in the tank and in the bucket, but as soon as you go to lift it up, it starts leaking vacuum. So you wanna get it on the teat as fast as possible. So this part here, this screw is called a set screw. That's what you can use to adjust your pulsation. So you bring it out to make it pulse faster, or you bring it in to make it pulse slower. You don't need to adjust it much. One thing I've noticed with this vacuum pump setup that we have is if you do not have your vacuum set up properly, if you have a leak anywhere, it will pulse so fast that it will be extremely uncomfortable for the cow and it doesn't matter how much you adjust the set screw, you can't change it until you figure out where it's leaking air from. So you need to make sure that you're paying attention to that because you definitely don't want it to be pulsing super, super fast when it's on your cow because it's very uncomfortable for her and it'll make her very sour to having the machine on her. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to that. If it's doing that, there's been the odd time where I cannot figure out why, I will just take the machine off and I'll just hand milk her in that scenario. That's happened a couple times. There's also inside this pulsator, there's a little check valve that goes in a hole there. You need to make sure that check valve is in there or else it will not work properly. The first couple times we used the machine, we forgot to put that in there and it definitely did not work properly. So yeah, it takes a few minutes to get her milk out. And what we do here is we're just making sure that you're feeling for when her udder is starting to get empty. You can also quickly push on these milk lines and feel if the milk is running through them or not. When it starts to get really empty, it'll start sucking air, and then you want to make sure you take the inflation off. Otherwise, you're going to start losing vacuum and making the cow very uncomfortable. You can hear it sucking air. So what I do 
that was kind of hard to see, but what I do is I pinch this line and then I pull it off the teeth. This one back teeth that she has is a really high producer in that quarter, so it always takes a lot longer to milk out. Um, she also has some tissue buildup in there from, I'm not sure what, but she's always had that in there ever since we got her. She had some kind of injury to that teeth, but it still milks out and that quarter still produces a lot. Sometimes when we're hand milking her or when we're machine milking her, you just have to like massage that milk out of that quarter to get it to milk out all the way. But when you're milking the cow with a machine, don't just expect to set it and forget it type deal. You need to pay attention to your cow and how to milk her out properly. Every cow is going to be a little bit different. There are different sizes of surge milk buckets that you can find. They don't make them new anymore. They're all used units, but they're really great units. But anyways, they make different size buckets. So you can get um, a three gallon one, you can get a four gallon one, and I think maybe a five. So ours is a three gallon, I believe, which is actually perfect for our cow. But if you were gonna milk a cow that was a higher producer, you'd probably wanna keep an eye on if that bucket is getting full or not, or maybe switching to a bucket that holds more milk because if it does get full, it's gonna start sucking that milk into the vacuum line, which you don't want. One thing I've read is it's a little bit different when you're machine milking versus hand milking, is you don't wanna take the machine off and then hand strip her after because it can teach your cow not to fully let down her milk. So if you notice that you're starting to lose pressure and you're starting to not get good suction on that inflation on one of your quarters because it's starting to get empty, don't try to keep it on there and try to get every last drop of milk out because it just, it doesn't really work very well. Okay, so once you've got our milk out, turn the over here, turn the cuts off, turn that all the way off, and then you remove the bucket off of the cow.